Yeah, so today we have two speakers for you. Um, the first one is from Calgary Police Services, and I'll let Matthew introduce them. And secondly, we have somebody from the uh, Canadian Pension Plan Investment Board, and uh, we'll introduce him uh, later on. So, Kathy, are you ready to? Oh, before you forget, please remember if you're driven here and parked in the Kirby lot, that you have to register down at the uh, main um, reception desk. And for washrooms, they're down by the reception desk in the front. First speakers today are Calgary Police Services Crime Prevention Team, and it falls under the Community and Youth Services section. The Crime Prevention Team researches, educates, and delivers crime prevention programs in the area of graffiti, environmental design, drug awareness, coordinated safety response team, and a multi-agency group focusing on unsafe properties in the city of Calgary. So Mike, who's with us today, has been with CPS for coming on 23 years. And he doesn't see himself as an expert on fraud, but more as someone who has seen some of the devastating effects it has on people. Um, his hope is to simply let people know they have the power to protect themselves and are better equipped than they think they are to do this. And if Steve hasn't come yet, Mike. No, he hasn't. Um, that's, are you that's okay good. with that? Oh, yeah. well, we also have, have this guy. Yeah. We also this have guy's way more entertaining. Yeah. We also have Pierre, but I don't know anything about Pierre. Oh, I know. I'm a, I'm a big secret. So you're going to have to introduce yourself. Yeah, sounds good. We won't. We won't need the. Do we need the mic for the online stuff? Online. For oh. the online, we will. Okay. <clears throat> I'll let my partner go first. Then. No. <laughs> well, no. Introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, hey, I'm Constable Poitras. Uh, we do these. Yeah, no problem. So, Council of Waitress, um, we do these presentations very casual uh, because we're part of the community as well. Um, uh, it, so, I've been on for 17 years uh, with Mike. Actually, we've known each other for 17 years, and uh, yeah, we're both in crime prevention. Um, so, the best thing we can tell you guys is kind of like the ongoing. Uh, frauds and different emails and phone calls and everything. If any of you have cell phones on with you, turn them on and make sure the sound is on because the best thing is when we do our presentations, I promise you somebody in here is going to get a text or is going to get a phone call and then we can actually do it live and show you guys you know, the best way to deal with it. So, so you don't have to answer it, but at least if it comes up, you can, you know, we don't want you to do anything you're- That's right. So, yeah, so the phone rings and you don't know who it is, just raise your hand and yeah. I'll come deal with them. Um, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then if you get a text, just let us know. So I presented at CP Rail a few weeks back for uh, 75 of their retired members. And during the conversation, we had three phone calls and we had over 12 texts. And this was in a half an hour period. So it just made everybody realize that uh, we're, we're all in the same boat. Uh, we all get it. Even our um, our cell phones from the Calgary Police Service, we get at Costco, we get all sorts of stuff. Even on our purse or on our work emails, uh, they'll even send us stuff. So don't be surprised if you get weird emails and so on. I'll let my partner speak now. Oh. Sure. Do you want me to keep going? I don't no, want to keep going. You know, oh, okay. I guess, I guess I'm going to keep going. Um, the camera's right here. Oh, yeah. Hello, Internet. I don't think it's here. Um, I'm well, sure. <laughs> first of all, have any of you been victims of. And if fraud? you don't feel, you know, that you you're not want comfortable to. with it, that's fine. Let's start making it easier. Who's got email? All right. So everybody's got one of those emails where you just won. A million dollars. I, I love the way Mike presents things. He goes, you know, back in the nineties, did any of you get a get a call from Apple or get a call from it would have been IBM back then to invest in their product? Anybody? Right? No. So it's not going to be any different today, right? So so you, when you get an email from like I don't know, when you say Tesla, but like Tesla two point they're not going to email you. They're not going to say, hey, we have this great thing for you to invest in. That's not going to happen. 
Um, another one of the very simple emails is going to be a CRA email. Um, and, and you're not going to get that from us. You're not going to get that from them. If the CRA wants your money, they're just going to take it, right? Let's be honest. It's just a fact, right? Like, they know where you live. They know where you live. Isn't that weird, right? And they probably know you better than your own kids know you, right? So, um, so that's sort of the thing. So my mother is 73 years old, and I have coffee with her every Sunday morning. And every Sunday morning, we go through emails that she's gotten. So she's kind of my guinea pig for you guys. So if it doesn't work for my mom, it's not going to work for you guys. So I try to keep it as simple with her as I can. And it's the same thing for all of us, where the simpler it is to defeat these, these fraudsters, uh, the better it is for all of us as a community. And the biggest thing today is if you remember one thing, you remember one thing, you remember one thing, and it's all different, well, then you'll be teaching each other. You'll be teaching your friends, and that's one less victim that we're going to have, right? Um, so cold calls, phone calls, who still has a landline? All right, so get rid of your landline. God, well, no, God, no, 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 no. Landline. Hey, so See, Mike, Mike and I just, yeah. we put on we a show. We don't agree here. on things, I, but keep your landline, because as we found out when Rogers was down, you need oh, your landline. Yep. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so keep your landline. Yeah. Oh, I have better sound, sound for hearing. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, if you have the, the T. <laughs> that's the that's true, actually. That's true. That's true. So a lot of the times, even through cell phones, the, the way it happens is, um, so it can be anywhere in the world, but I'm just going to use India because there's lots of videos on that, but it can happen anywhere in the world. And they'll buy out the buildings, they'll buy out office buildings, 12 floors, and they'll fill these floors with computers, they'll fill these floors with phone numbers or with phones, and they'll fill them with people. And those people's jobs are to defraud you, right? And you have to think of the crushing poverty some of these countries are in and some of these folks are in. So they might be getting four or $5 a week to do what they're doing. But what we call it is the shotgun approach, right? So if I were to send all of you guys, hey, uh, me, oh, actually, I'm just gonna pick on you because you, you seem like a nice lady. So Mike, you get to stand there. Now I'm okay, gonna so walk around. The internet people can see me right on. I, I'm gonna get a little bit here. How are you? <laughs> What are you doing today? Not much. Do you want to give me five hundred dollars? Sorry. Do you want to give me five hundred dollars? Are you serious? Yeah. Do you have five hundred bucks? No. Want it? Not for you. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but it feels weird, right? Yeah. And then when there's no face to it, we don't actually feel that weird. We're like, what? This doesn't make sense. So we start questioning. So now you get a phone call. Hey, Grandma, it's your favorite grandson. I know that scam. Yeah. Oh, oh well, there you go, right? So you speak the language. No, the answer is I they're twins. Which one is it? Hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, but, uh, well, it's your favorite one. <laughs> Tell well, me then. <laughs> see, and that's it. You're defeating me, right? That's the trick, right? So you're gonna get a lot of these silly phone calls where hi, it's the Calgary Police Service. That would skim. Okay, well, let's keep going with that. <laughs> Hi, it's the Calgary Police Service. I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I really put you on the spot. I'm going to go pick up this dude over here. <laughs> 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 Hi, I'm from Hi, I'm from It looks like you have outstanding warrants, and you need to go buy us some gift cards. And to pay off your seven months. <laughs> Tell me more about the orange. Yeah. Well, it looks like you were speeding. It looks like you didn't cook. And it looks like you forgot to clean the bathroom as you went past. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I don't have time for this. I'm going to need you to give me your credit card number. No, I, I'll do this, uh, this way. I'll stand out in front of my house tomorrow at 10 o'clock. You come pick me up. Okay, sounds good. We'll send somebody. <laughs> well, here's the crazy part. They might send somebody. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. But yes, so it's been happening. So if they say, if they start getting more and more aggressive with you online, I'll go back and put up the camera. Yeah. If it starts getting more and more aggressive with you and they say, I am going to show up, that's when you call us. Yeah. Right? So here's the other fun part of the internet. I don't know if there's a chat going, but when do you call the police? Uh, I'm, telling, I'm asking you guys, when do you call the police? Let's just go random. When would you call the police? So, yeah, Robert, okay, what else? Just, oh. just people in the neighborhood. Okay. Sounds good. So, um, if somebody has a heart attack, 
We all know 911, yeah. but who do we want to show up? Yeah. EMS, right? So the paramedics. If there's a fire, who do we want to show up? Fire. Good. But if the aliens land, <laughs> I'm showing up. <laughs> if, if, if your lawn gnome goes missing, I'm showing up. So the point I'm trying to make here is if you have any doubts or any worries or any kind of your spidey senses, yeah, something's not going right, right? Call us. If it's an emergency, call 911. If you're not sure if it's an emergency, call 911. If you're completely unsure what to do, call 911. Because the operator that picks up the 911 phone call or that picks up the non-emergency phone call, so the 266-1234, it's going to be the same people. And that person is going to pick up the phone and say, you know, uh, 911 response, or I can't remember what they actually say, what's your emergency? Actually, I'm not too sure. Okay, is this an emergency? I don't think so. My life's not at risk, whatever. They're going to ask really quick questions. And then they're going to send a call away to the right person. Or they might even say to you, if they're smart, go for that's right. They might even say to you, oh, okay, no, now I can help you. So what happens is we have a call center and we have a bunch of different individuals in there that take the exact same phone calls for fire, EMS, and police. And then we have what's called dispatchers, right? And we have different groups. But the phone, the phone takers or the call takers, they all do the same job. They're all cross-trained in what they do. So never, never worry about calling 911 and getting in trouble because you pay us to do that job. That's our job to help you. And I think that's one of the big disconnects right now in the world that, that I'm your neighbor and you're my neighbor. And if I, if I can't be there when you need help, then what are you paying me for? What did you hire me for to protect the neighborhood, to make sure that there's no bad guys coming after you, make sure that all of these things. So I'm kind of going away from the fraud speech here, but it's that personal safety bit, right? That, so yeah, so let's go back to the role play. You know, show up at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, sunny boy. Right? Okay, you know what? Call us. Call the non emergency number and say, hey, I just got this cold call from this company. The guy was very aggressive on the phone, said they're coming to my house. I'm worried for my life. Uh, they said, I told them to be here at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. I know it was a mistake. I'm sorry. But could I, could I just have an officer show up maybe tomorrow around that time just to help me out and make sure everything's okay? Because we want to know that because it has happened in Calgary where now they'll say, because they'll know your address or they'll drop a word or you'll make a mistake and, and that information gets out of us, right? So they got your phone number from TELUS, from Bell, from whoever, from Shaw, because there's going to be bad people everywhere. So somebody's getting paid for it or they're, they're just going to use those and they're just going to call a million people a day, right? Um, it, it, your turn, because I'm forgetting stuff now. Oh yeah, no, it's all, it's all good. So, the thing Pierre actually hit on a few. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Pierre hit on a few things that are very important. Um, first off, he was referring to the fact that the fraudsters, however they reach you, so phone, text, email, however, they're going to try to create in you a sense of urgency. All right, they're going to try to make you think, "Oh my gosh, I need to deal with this immediately. This is emergency." Well, no, it isn't. No one has a gun in your face. No one has a knife to your throat. This is where you, have, you do have to take time. You have to stop. And that's what I always ask people. And so I wrote up a little thing, just a couple of pages. And every few sentences, I say, stop. <laughs> you know, stop and think. Okay, just a second. Well, do I owe anything? Or do I have some questions? Like, oh, what the warrant? You know, and you can take steps to verify that. So you go, okay, well, thanks for the information. I'll uh, I'll take care of it. I'll go to the station. Click. Something like that. Or quite frankly, you can hang up. We get hung up on anyway. So if it is a real call, we're like, oh, I'll just go to your house. Yeah. You'll see me in uniform. But so that's okay. So again, it's mainly to stop yourself, verify that source of information. Did you have a question? I did. I wondered if there's any risk uh, other than getting pulled into it. Just to stay on the phone, like can you be tracked in some way? Well, I wouldn't stay on the phone for several reasons. Um, I mean, and this is very far fetched, but it could happen. I mean, the way computers work nowadays, who knows? And again, I'm a Luddite. I see a computer, I break it. Not a purpose. <laughs> Not like the actual Luddites, but anyway. Um, uh, yes, so who knows? They could actually get you to say a few things yeah. that would 
boys call things for other things. So you don't need to be polite to these people. You don't need to say anything. Hang on. Just hang on. Um, another thing, give us that one. Sure. Yeah, I know where you're going. Here, give yeah. it like one, two, three. Well, oh. yeah. What's that? No, I got you. I think I got it. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know. Maybe I lose on first. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. We're kind of having a sell. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So you said I was staying on the phone. I enjoy that game because it's fun for me to do. And then what it does is at least it's keeping them on the phone for another minute or two so they don't call you guys. Don't, but don't do that. No, right. So um, but yeah, the biggest thing is like Mikey said, they'll 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 go after us because we're nice, because yes. you know you know you care. And we want to be courteous and we want to be polite. But after a while, we don't want to be victimized either. Right? The expression, don't mistake my niceness for weakness, that's what we want to build for all of you guys, right? So when when somebody calls cold calls you and says, um, you know, yeah, yeah, more to her, hey, this is a CRA, you owe five thousand dollars, whatever it is, they'll go into the obituaries of each city, country, whatever you want, and they'll be like. I see your husband died last week. We went to a widow's group and presented, mm -hmm. and uh, he owed $50,000 in tax. We're going to need that today. So what do you do now? Because now they're playing with your heartstrings. Now they're playing with, you, you can barely, you have so many things in your mind right now that how are you going to deal with that, right? Again, like Mike said, the best thing is just stop yourself and go, if the government wants my money, they're just going to take it. So if you put that back into your mindset and just go, just stop. I am going to call the police. I am going to call my son, my daughter, my neighbor, my friend. And that's where as a community, we help each other out. Where now you can actually take a step back and go, I'm going to call those phone numbers. I'm going to call the police. And getting back to that, sorry, because your question was great. It just took me off track because I've just been traveling recently. So within the country, don't worry. But again, so verify those um, uh, sources of information. So you get off the phone, you go to the actual verified, you know, company. So if you had a, say you had the Amazon thing going on, okay, just a second. Well, if I do have an Amazon account and I made something for them, I'll go to my Amazon account. Don't click, click on those links. Yeah, don't you use the email. Don't use those emails, the texts, et cetera. Don't do that, okay? <clears throat> it takes just a few more seconds, verify. Uh, again, they say they're the CRA. All right, well, Government of Canada. You know, it's probably, you can just put any of that. It will bring you to the um, anti-fraud center or the CRA or whichever one. And you'll get that, you know, proper email address, et cetera. Get your information from that. And also, so what happens is, you know, again, when I'm saying stop, what I'm asking you is to give yourself time to use what we all have, which is that sixth sense, which I always like bringing the book anyways, because it's uh, it's actually my wife's, one of her favorite books. She likes nonfiction. I'm a fiction. His wife was my partner on the job. Yeah. Fantastic police officer. Yeah. No, she is amazing. You had a problem. I would say you'd want her to take care of it than before us. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're good at certain things. She's, she's actually really good, or was she retired as well. Um, but this book here, sorry. Oh, you can't even see here. Let's oh, see. Let's see. I'll hold it. Hold it. That, yeah. that way. Oh. But, so, The Gift of Fear, you don't need to read it. Quite frankly, you're in synopsis. Go that way. Quite uh, <laughs> synopsis. Oh, quite frankly, the whole book. Oh, there it is. There it is. I'm in there. What else is telling you is to pay attention to those little warning signs and lights in your head. We all have them. And then I understand as well, even as we're aging, but even as we're young, it doesn't matter what part of life we're in. Sometimes we may not you know, be there completely, but we have some people who are very switched off and people are throughout their whole lives. If you have friends, etc., that aren't as you know switched on anymore, that's okay. They're a part of the community. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's a it's the expression, the yeah. expression we use in word. Yeah, sorry. It's how we actually speak. Somewhere. Can I jump in? Yes. Sir. Sure. Give it. Um, and, and then we say, oh, yeah, you know, the, the retired folks, this, that. Actually, I've got a 17-year-old daughter, and she comes up to me all the time like, dad, is this a fraud? So now what we're seeing is uh, young adults, young kids who have access to the phone. They're 10 years old. 
So when my daughter was eight and we were working together, we were doing a report at our arrest processing unit. And all of a sudden I started seeing charges for this game. And it was my daughter thinking, oh, it's fake money. I'm just buying money for the game, right? They had to put rules and regulations around that. She managed to spend $3,500 in seven minutes, right? But, but that's the thing, right? Like you have to make your kids aware of that. You have to make so, so it's not about, again, it, it's multi-generational and they'll attack us on different levels. Yes. Oh, and another thing, just going on, just going on that thing, because this happened again to a friend of mine. Um, so I have an Apple, and I think Samsung does as well. Here comes stand back here, because oh. you're just a giant shadow for the internet people. <laughs> I mean, I care about you, but anyway. <laughs> um, so uh, what happened with the voice, or sorry, with the uh, face recognition, uh, he has a foster child. That foster child went up to his wife's face while she was having a nap and authorized a lot of the purchases. So I have things to be aware of. Anyways, I mean, technology is great. However, there are things that can be done, especially if someone's sneaky. Yeah, as a smart little kid. And that was about $5,000 as well. And, you know, the, or a 33 year old yes. who decides to invest in a different company. Yeah. And his dad calls me and says, uh, it says, my son's lost $85,000. I said, well, what do you want me to do about it? Yeah. He says, well, what, what should I do? Well, he invested it. He decided. So let's talk about cryptocurrency right now. Cryptocurrency, do not touch ever. Please don't. Just don't. Okay. It's not. It was meant to be uh, an anti government movement, right? It's not good. It is not a healthy area to go into. Same thing with those uh, NFTs. Thank you. Wow. You should do my job. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not enough coffee. Yeah, and everything does, right? So if it's not tangible, if it's not, but it's this new age, it's, it's these kids thinking, oh, I can make a quick buck, I can do this, do that. And it's unfortunate because we see them lose tons and tons of money, right? So it was university money, and they said, wow, I could double my money in a year. Well, your money's gone. And just so you guys know, um, who here you shops online? Anybody who buys anything on the internet? Do you feel safe buying things on the internet? Not really. Okay, you should. You should, because places like Amazon are going to be very, very safe. But you have to have the padlock. Yes, that's right. That's right. You have to, you have to make sure you're on the website. The other thing I, I, I tell people in my family is, if you're going to buy an item from Amazon, this one is $50 and that one is $35, but they're the exact same. Ask yourself why, and then start looking at the reviews. If the one for $50 has like a thousand reviews and the one for 35 has 20 reviews, Maybe ask yourself, this guy might be a fraudster. Amazon can't keep track of all their sell their sellers, right? But they do their best at it. So again, it's buyer beware. It comes down to if you're going to go buy a used car, buyer beware, right? So it's the same thing on the internet. You are very well protected. However, be mindful of who you're buying from and so on. Same thing with like, if you're going to buy things on Kijiji, you know, don't send money first before you see the product. I mean, it's all things that, it's common sense things that are, that we don't want to feel like we're we're defending other people. Right? Does that make sense? Um, your turn. Sure. Does anybody have examples or anything that we can bring up? Because there's so many different topics that we can bring up. Yes, go ahead. I please. Just keep on getting calls from the state for yeah. timeshare. Oh yeah. Oh, that's new. Timeshare. Time. Interesting to buy timeshares. They want to buy. No, no, no. They want to buy our timeshares. Yeah. Oh, it, okay. Do you mind telling me more about that? Because I haven't. Well, I get calls from New York, Indiana, Colorado. Colorado. And does somebody actually pick up the phone? They no. no. have a timeshare no. and they uh, call us and they we have a deal for you. You want to sell your timeshare? Okay, so somebody, the there's a voice, so it's not an automated, it's so no, somebody. It's a voice yeah. and, and then you guys just ignore it. Return, oh. return number. We're registered, we're lawyers, blah, blah, blah. Right, right. So that's probably. I, don't, I have no idea who they are. They, 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 they I'm supposed to call. Hey? No, they, they don't do have a timeshare. Do they have timeshare? Yeah. Yeah, so do. it could be legit. It could not be. But yes, yeah, so go ahead. This, so sorry, I bring this up because my parents have timeshares that yeah. they purchased in a similar plan in Mexico and they get calls all the time yeah. uh, to buy those timeshares and which would these rich offers. And uh, I've been on the phone with them and spoken to them, and they've said, and I'm like, where are you? And they're like, I'm in Norway. I'm like, 
like, oh. Oh. Uh, could we, could, what, what's your address? Uh, they, give it, they give an address, I punch it in, it's like some tissue you know, so Right, it's, right. It's, it's just. Um, so this is the first time I, this is really cool. I'm sure it's been going on for a long time. This yeah. is interesting. Oh, it's been going on for several well, years. What may have happened? I, I just ignore them. Yeah, your number may have been sold in the list. Yeah. yeah. And now you're getting yeah. the fraudsters calling you. But they have my my landline and my cell phone. Did you I register that? My cell phone. Interesting. Well, so they given, just we may have given it to the uh, Yeah. So somebody somebody obviously it's attached to it and the, they'll figure it out. Right. That's their job. In the city, so just for people online, it was just more of a people are getting uh, phone calls to buy their timeshares, but they do have a timeshare. Just so you're sort of in each picture. So what what may have happened with uh, yeah you think that they had your cell number anyways afterwards correct yeah. we've even gone, we've even gone to the extent of saying okay we're interested yeah uh, but we're not going to put any money up front right right okay send send uh, send some information to send some to our lawyer right That's, yeah we don't hear anything more but yeah so then you know it's a fraudster yeah. well they, we're, we're we're being proactive yes. Yeah. Assuming the worst, but expecting the best, okay? Exactly. And when you go to sell your time chart, you will approach, yeah. you will probably just approach the people yeah, and they'll say, okay, fine, here's a broker that needs to meet you, et cetera, yeah. and go on from there. Your lawyer may know, et cetera. That. That's the way to do it. Um, or you can blame the pension plan guy. Just blame the pension plan guy. We've even got sucked into the pension. We've even got sucked into the thing, thing me, I'm more. Susceptible than my spouse. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to rent your timeshare. Uh, yeah. However, we need a deposit to to advertise. Uh, yes. yes. No. And and yeah. But you say how they get you because yeah. if one way doesn't work, they're going to try it a different way in yeah. a different way, right? Yeah. What did you do for a living, or what are you doing now for a living? I'm a security guard. Okay. What did you do? Is, you've been doing that for a very very long. Time. I've been a corporate director and things like that. Yeah. Right, so you're very good at your job because you did it for so many years. That's what these people do day in and day out. So they, they, they get, you know, they get trained. They get, they understand how psychology works. They understand when to fish for more information. That's why these emails are called phishing, right? It's trying to get that. They're just trying that out. They're just trying to get someone to, to, to respond. And one thing, again, I always ask people just not to stay on the line because just like a fisherman, yeah. What can happen is, say you're, you have a little dog, oh, a little dog barks in the background. Oh, what's your dog's name? Da -da -da. You say, oh, it's Fido. Oh, that's a possible password because people yeah. unfortunately pick things that are oh you known to them. Yeah. So things like that, you know, so you don't want to do that. Um, yeah, and it, it's just they're able to get information from you. I have another example. I had a call this week allegedly from Visa saying that. Uh, your card's been used mm. this week for an eBay purchase, and they said foreign gift cards. Mm. Was that you? Mm. And I said, no, it definitely wasn't. Now, my question is three years ago, my card was used. I was at work, and they said, Are you in Florida? Your card's mm. been used twice. And I said, No, I'm at work. I wish I was. <laughs> so those calls started the same way, yes. and then I got uh, a couple of lines into it, and he said, can you just give me the last eight digits of the card? <laughs> and I said, no, no, I don't think so, you Good. already have that. Exactly. I'll call Visa directly, and I hung up. Yes. But both calls started <laughs> exactly the same way, and, and just, I don't know if it's coincidence, but Beginning of January, I phoned Visa and said, can I get my uh, new card early because I'm going out of the country? And uh, they said, yeah, it'll go in the mail this week. You'll have it by the end of January, which now I don't. It never showed up. So now I wonder, did they get my new card in the mail? And I'm getting this phone call because they want to get information to activate it. They also want your voice. Yes, your voice again because they'll see if they can get you to say yes, no, that, things like that. 
They also might, oh, okay, so let's you know go on further. Oh, well, just flip over the card. What's the three, what are the three digits on the back? You know, they're going to try to drag slowly put more and more information out of you. So that's the thing is that, you know what? Again, like Pierre said, we don't owe these people any sort of social grace, quite frankly. So either you don't answer the phone or you hang up. And we have to also think about why are we doing this? What, what's making me do this? Is it because I, I have fear of missing out on this big you know, opportunity when it comes to investment? Or am I just, you know. Did I win a trick? Did I, did I win a trick? You know, like, it's not that it's greedy. It's just like, oh, hey, sure, I'd like to have some more money or whatever, or a trip, things like that. And we also have to remember not to let our own pride and our ego get in our way. Because quite frankly, sometimes it may look completely legit. And we're like, wow, okay, this is maybe the CRA is after you or whatever. Well, say, okay, thank you, click. Go ask a friend, go ask a, a grandchild or whoever, and just say, okay, does this seem to make sense? And they look at it and they're like, I've never received that. I don't think that's real. And also, as we know about tax courts, et cetera, they've got, it would take 10 years before anything happened anyways. Other than if they want money, they'll just, they'll just they'll take a scan. Yeah. But if they're going to charge you, that's going to take forever. So don't worry about that kind of stuff. Okay, I've had enough of you. Oh my God. And I know you're, just, you're a lot of work. Right? You guys have enough of this guy. I love what you said. So the credit card. So go that way. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, so the credit cards, uh, a lot of people wonder so is online purchasing good? Is uh, So Mike and I, I use my phone to pay for everything. Mike uses his debit card. Right? Oh, credit card, right, that's right, for the security and everything. So um, let's go back in time, uh, just to give you an idea of how, how cards are now and the safety behind them. Let's go back in time, town, the time, mid-1800s. We have a bank, the bank has money in it. Um, it's a bit of a safe, but not really, right? So we have the sheriff, we have the deputies, we have some security guards, and, and they're there to protect your money that is in that safe. So that was the old school way of doing things. Then they went, ah, you know what? We keep getting robbed. They keep getting the money out of our safe. We're going to make the safe a little bit better so we don't have to have as many staff. So then that worked. But then you had people that were able to crack the safes or blow them up or whatever they would be needed to do. So then they thought, hmm, we're going to need much bigger safes with alarm systems and so on. So now we're moving to you know the mid-1900s. We're thinking, OK, so there might be a security guard there. The bank tellers are there. There's money everywhere. Everybody's got their little bank book, right, to keep their information. If you want to take money, you have to go to the teller. Is this one somewhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting there. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then we move over to the 80s, where you're like, oh, what is this ATM? Does it stand for Alien Time Machine? No, it's automated uh, teller machine. So now we're starting to get rid of people. We're replacing them with robots. We're like, oh, I can't trust those robots. But what they're doing, what the bank is doing, is slowly removing money out of the bank. So now they can't take your money physically. So now it's added that step of security for you. Right? So now, now the bad guys are thinking, well, now we need to get into the internet. So now you move into the internet age, where now we're doing online banking and so on. The bank still has a responsibility, no different than back in the 1800s, to protect you and your money. So the steps that they take is codes. Uh, their own encryption, their own, and so on and so forth. So when we talk about your uh, your visa, visa protects their customers because they will call you and say, hey, did you make those two purchases in Florida? And you're like, no, I sure didn't. They're like, thank you, that's it. Or your bank will call you, or you'll get an email. Most of the time you won't get a real email, but sometimes you do, and contact your bank, and that's where they'll protect you. Where now you, you download your card onto your phone, it adds that much more protection to it, if you walk into a bank right now and you ask them, like, I don't know, thousand dollars American money, it might take a day or two before they get it because they don't keep money in the banks anymore. It's just all, you know, in the in the cloud. So that's where that added protection as a consumer that they have decided to say, you know what, this is the best way to protect our customers and ourselves from being robbed and so on. But obviously, technology moves forward, bad guys catch up, and it becomes this cat and mouse game. Does that make sense? And the banks are becoming. A little bit more lax, which is unfortunate. Yes, yeah. you can nowadays um, apply for uh, loans, etc., online. So again, that's why you need to protect your information. Your information. Because so actually, even physically, do not leave your uh, purse or wallet 
in your console of your car. It happens all the time. People then come to us and are like, oh, well, I left my wallet in the car. You're like, why did you leave your wallet in the car? <laughs> and my passport. And yes, and, and my health care. And my system. system. Like everything. You know, it's like, and also, I mean, you guys probably you already know this. Oh, for right now, bring it on board. Let's take a look. So just awesome. online, we saw, we supposed to have somebody with an email. That yeah. might be a little weird. So um, do you want to talk about this? Oh, good email. Sure. Sure. Well, quite frankly, so as Pierre is doing that, this is the government of uh, Canada. And Jeff may be referring to this as well at some point. Uh, this is actually through the Competition Bureau of the government. And you can actually get an online version. If you wanted actual physical copies, you can definitely bring them back to the, uh, to the Kirby Center, or if you're having a meeting, we just drop them off to you at any time. You just let us know. We don't mind coming up. But this, and actually this one was uh, put together in, I think it was 2017. So it is a few years old. However, we, what we notice is quite frankly, the whole thing is always the same. That sense of urgency um, and getting you, quite frankly, to just give a little information or if you're going to send off money, that kind of stuff. So, so when, again, uh, we have to remember, and again, we have to remember that I've been off uh, work here for a little bit, so I'm just trying to remember. You're in Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's actually from my mom's uh, birthday. <laughs> so I went back to, to see her. But, uh, paying attention to your detail. What's that? We're paying attention to your detail. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate it very much, sir. Yes. I tell you. Oh, so, yes. One thing. Um, one thing I do want to let you know, because unfortunately, you probably came here hoping. Uh, but please are going to tell me one great golden thing that's going to keep you safe. Unfortunately, no. there isn't anything that I can say. Put on this on your computer or on your phone. You're going to be completely safe. I was watching CNN actually this was about six months ago. They had a security expert on. Uh, his company did develop something for the phone. And I noticed in his interview, he was like, yes, he does this. But then he kept referring back to the fact that we, he's going to still rely on you not giving your information over. So I'm kind of like, yeah. so we're going to pay for this app, but it really just relies on you again. So quite frankly, yeah, go ahead. Another well, question. I was just wondering, can you put on your service provider for telephone and internet? You can put on extra security on yeah, your and through your those providers, you know, set up, right. yeah, yeah. set up those information, you know, those things. One thing I've noticed because I'm with Rogers is they just recently uh, started blocking possible scam calls. Yeah, yeah. If you have Rogers, I don't know if the other ones have caught up to do that. Because one other thing I noticed on CNN, quite frankly, again, it was American News, but the FCC is much more strict than the CRTC when it comes to the telecommunications uh, you know, world. They will actually find companies. They're starting to get on board with the fact that, okay, now you're a big multi-billion dollar company. You can't tell me that your computers don't know that this one phone number, this bank of phone numbers is putting out 100,000 calls per day or whatever the numbers are. You know that they're doing that. So stop that, you know, so that's, they're actually getting off it. I was reading even just the first um, page of the CRTC with the telecommunications. And it was, it, even just the first page, I just stopped. It was so wishy-washy and loopholes after loopholes. I was just like, oh my Lord, the kid was just like, oh, but if the company does this, it's okay. Well, if they sell your information, it's okay because if they do this. I'm sorry, what kind of legislation is that? That's not protecting you. And that's actually one big reason I wanted to come to Carver um, as well, just so you know, you guys, and it's like you're not all going to vote the same, of course, but you are a voting law. You can represent yourselves to the members of our parliament, et cetera, and say, hey, why aren't you protecting us? Protect us better. Make them do their job. We're paying them, you know, large fees. If this is something they can do quite easily, like Rogers just did it. Uh, probably because they realize, okay, it's coming down the pike. You know, this is going to happen. We need to do this. That's great. I'm not saying everyone go to Rogers. I'm not saying everyone get an apple, this kind of stuff. But certain things are good. And you guys do have the power as a group to push some agendas, quite frankly. Say, hey, why aren't you protecting us? 
It's also, I have to admit, oh, go ahead. Won't the government just hire consultants to? <laughs> <laughs> yes, unfortunately, the government's in Canada does do that. Like, yes, we, so we want I that from them. So frankly, yeah, but different, but we, we have to engage at some point uh, as a group, you guys, and you have, quite frankly, again, you know, treasurer, etc. You know, you guys have the means and everything, quite frankly, to put this together. There's probably ex lawyers here. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, you know, you guys have a bunch of information and knowledge and how to push things forward. That's why you're a part of the as well, quite frankly. So please, that's again one of the big things I was hoping to get and share. And and share yes, and put this out there. And also, quite frankly, I know the media and everything we do say about the grandparents and all that, but like Pierre said, his daughter, um, the nurse had friends, uh, friends. Yeah, everybody. I've had there's like a, a young girl, she was a well, young girl, lady or whatever, but she was in her 20s. She had lost, it was between two and three hundred thousand dollars on a romance scheme or scam. And there's nothing I could do. I took a report because it was my job. And that's one thing again. If the police are saying, well, it's gone and it's a civil matter, we're not going to do a report, no, no, it's our job. They should be doing a report. Just like if you do call 911, because as Kara said, it does happen. And actually, I was surprised that it happened. It's happening a little bit more than we thought, because the RCMP, uh, we're part of this fraud committee, uh, uh, fraud month is in March. But apparently, and mainly in the rural areas, there have been, there have been about 30 at that point calls where, yeah, they actually said, okay, we're going to send either a bailiff. So if you hear these words, oh, send a bailiff, send a courier to your house, et cetera. Those are the cues that, oh, crap, or French, they may be sending someone to my house. Call us. If you get a dispatcher that's rude, take care of business first, and quite frankly, make a complaint and say, you know what, counsel me, branch 3487, hospital poitras, Four 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 three oh eight four three oh eight. Three, eight. <laughs> God, what kind of friend is he? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we told you quite frankly, and I don't mind if they want to squawk at me. They need to do their job and get us out there to help you. Yeah. There's other ones that uh, come in on email. There's a couple things uh, about uh, parcel. Yeah, and yeah, parcel parcel yeah. Yes. And you never ordered yeah. anything. Yeah. Nope. There's that. And then on Facebook, there's a lot of things. Yeah, you, yes. You, you put in win or something like that, and you get this. It's all yes. yes. Can I? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, Facebook. Uh, Karen's really good at that. But a lot of Facebook stuff, yeah, you'll hit something. You know, actually, you, know, you think, oh, it's for a lost dog, et cetera. Well, one thing that they were looking at is the lost dog was like seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that dog. So it was redirected. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Probably already dead. Yeah, sad, but it will redirect you to something else. You know, they do a lot of those things. But Karen knows more about that. Um, they talk about it. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what we're going to talk about. It. So, uh, sorry, Miss, what was your name? I was just chatting with about Amazon. Oh. Uh, I was an Amazon. Joyce. Joyce, nice meeting you. Um, so Joyce just showed me her email, and it's Amazon saying that you recently made a purchase, yeah. and it didn't go through. What I find interesting is how do they know that you made a purchase through Amazon, right? I don't know that, I can't answer that. But all I can tell you is, like Mike said, don't click on the link. We click on the link because it's fun. Um, and then, no, no, no. Oh yeah, 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 you click on the link and then it brings you to the Amazon website, but it's a complete clone of it. So what they do is, and then they attach their little robots to it. And then you start going into it, you start putting in your credit card information, then it'll say, well, that credit card's declined. Send us another one. And it keeps going and going and going. Right? Just don't hit the link. I just wanted to show Joyce that where it's going to show you, it's going to show you that link. It's no different than with Facebook. I'm sure you guys have gotten some weird messages from your friends like, hey, we haven't chatted in a long time. What are you up to? Like, I haven't chatted with this person for 20 years. And they're like, oh, I'm going to click on, oh, I'm stuck in Dubai. I need some money to, to leave. Or I'm stuck in Florida. And, you know, could you help me out? And then they'll do that over and over and over. And all they're doing is they're cloning your information and just created a new Facebook page, right? So that happens a lot more with the youth. But what ends up happening is if you guys have Facebook accounts, 
and you don't go on to it all that much. Or like my mom said, so my mom has 12 brothers and sisters and she gets messages all the time. Well, sometimes she'll get weird messages and say, you would never send something like that. Or the package, she actually fell for that this winter. She called me. She said, uh, it said that I had a parcel on the way, but I needed to pay to receive it. And I clicked on the link. And I said, mom, did you put your credit card? She goes, no, because I'm not too sure who was sending me a package. I'm like, mom, nobody's sending you a package. And she said, oh, you're right. Nobody's sending me a package. But do you see what I mean? It's Christmas time. And that's what they do. And then it's summertime. So summertime, they'll be like, hey, we've got a great deal for you. You know, a, a, a trip somewhere, a this or that, or rent this place, right? So now we're falling for the VRBO scams where you're going to rent a place online. You show up at the VRBO with 16 other people, and that place doesn't actually exist. Yes. So. Oh, you get the tax? Hey, what did I say about the most of From the public church theory class. Oh, right. You won $27 million. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but do you guys, do you guys remember when we used to get the actual paper? Yeah. Right? We get, right? We all, yeah. The price is not here. Wants you to send them five bucks and you'll invest it for you. You're like, really? So, what did I talk about at the beginning with the Costco scam? It's the perfect one right here. So, if you were to click on the link, nothing's going to happen. It'll just bring you to the Costco website, but it'll be just a little weird. And at the top, it won't say HTTP. It's just, all right, so when you're thinking you're down and out, you're like, oh man, I could put 138 in my, you know, in my pocket right now. That's what they go after. So you're not special, I'm not special, but one of us needs money right now. And like Mike said, it's that like that urgency of, oh my god, this is going to save my day, right? Also, go ahead. Just another um, so just to leave those things like I just, just oh, just you just, just got one too. Got one for PayPal. Oh, yeah, get rid of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah get rid of that. We're going to give you $90. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks, PayPal. No thanks. And so that's one other thing, quite frankly, when it comes to whatever device you have, Android or Apple, whatever, just become familiar with it. Yes. Just you know, become familiar with how to delete things, how not to, because quite frankly, sometimes they are beneath it. I'll um, have one of those calls I want to do. Um, and after to, to take every phone, phone would be different. You sort of hit it, and you're trying to get it to swipe over to delete. Like, oh, it's raining. Yeah. You know, so it has, it's foaming. And you're like, okay, block that call, et cetera. But block. Yeah. yeah. Block and report. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing with your email. Your email has options to, like, you know, report that it's phishing. Where does it go to? I have no idea. I'm but sure it's helping somebody. Yeah. And you have to be careful because uh, this is just another thing that I remember here now from one of our talks. Uh, we were at a, a senior's uh, residence. And what was happening with that one? Which I think is almost as if it was an IT person trying to get your uh, get onto your computer, you know. So when you know that kind of thing, mm -hmm. but it was still it was a robocall, and it said something like, "If you're the homeowner, press one. If you're not, press two. And the person's like, "What?" And just hangs up. When I, that person said that, I was like, uh -huh. and "They're just trying to get you already to start manipulating, engaging, you. engaging, and they're going to start seeing what else you'll do." With the oh, just give me one second so I don't forget this. Because <laughs> we also have this tied into another fellow who had a landline and his computer was also through hardwired. And it was very strange. And I didn't get to speak to him, but one of our other partners did. It. So what happened? He received a phone call on his landline. The guy said, Oh, yeah, I'm with CPS. Da, 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 da. You know, you have to uh, do this, et cetera, whatever. And he said, But I know you don't know that I'm a police officer. So hang up immediately. Go look on your computer and uh, look at the address and phone number for six district. He did, and it's strange thing. So I think it's because of the hardwire. Again, not a tech guy. He actually googled six district and then he got the phone number and he phoned it and he got that guy again. So I think through he was able to patch somehow through the hardwire, but only for a very limited time. So again. That's when you stop. <laughs> Take some time. It wasn't. It wasn't CBS. No, 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 no. no. So, and it's like, very rare. That one. That's why, like Mike said, a lot of times you call you. You hear this weird one. It's like that seems strange. So possible again. So don't get rid of your landline. Five Just be aware. You know, do Wi-Fi when it comes to your computer. Quite frankly, because as it reminds people, it is you have to have another um, password. To lock it, etc. Yeah. You only allow certain people onto your Wi-Fi. 
it is another barrier. Yeah, but at some point they can break it, or if you've engaged with them, you've let them bypass it. So that's where you are truly the key. Yeah, oh, did you, just one second, I, there was one question before. Did no, you... it's not a question. Uh, um, I found some of the calls, what they want you to do is, when you pick up the phone, yeah. you can say hello, or whatever it is, don't say yes. Mm, because yes, automatically exactly. they'll record yes and you that's right that's what they use that yeah, that's why they use that to contact visa and that's why i'm saying yes just to, yeah 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 i just they don't want you to they'll yeah, try they to get you to words. say yes yeah. and uh, i just don't so the whole that. sorry do you mind if i just go to the internet thing? they just there was well, like <laughs> <laughs> um, so alan just asked how often do you recommend changing your password you know what? Oh, that, I, got, I got a good answer on that. Okay. Okay. that. Quite frankly, if you build one that's quite good, you may not have to change it as often, quite frankly. Um, but quite frankly, if you feel like I do it with pins quite often, quite frankly, because I just don't trust people. That's what I do. But uh, so I will for my debit card, my credit card change. And then, you know what they used to say every four months? I do it every, you know, maybe twice a year, etc. I'll change it. And all I'll do is I'll think of a random word, you know, I'll think of that word and just translate it into numbers. And that's that. I do that for those. Um, I unfortunately did it when I was going to Europe. I made my password six digits. However, in Europe, they don't like that. <laughs> I had to use my credit card for everything. <laughs> but anyway, so give it to four. It'll help you out, especially for traveling. But yeah, if you want to change those, definitely do. Never obviously never share it. Don't have it written down in your wallet, in your purse, etc. That kind of thing don't do. But you know what? Yeah. If you want to change it, if you or if you even have again that sense that you know that's that old school. I think that guy just was looking over my shoulder. It still happens. That guy may have my idea. You know what? If you feel that, it, even if it, maybe it didn't happen. Go change it. Why not? You, I would rather you go spend a half hour doing that than coming to us and then doing a report and you've lost however much money. You know. Can I make another suggestion? I just happened to go to a super classy hotel in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. I took my credit card and debit card and then we went in to get money and it said wrong password. Mm -hmm. So I put it in game. I'm sure I put the right one and it was scanned. Somebody put the Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Got it. How long ago was that? I know the first time. How long ago was that? Um, this is about three years ago. Oh, three yeah, years ago. No, but quite frankly, it's all the machines. Yeah. yeah, it still happens. So, again, oh. interesting. Yeah. So if you see something like, yeah, if the ATM still looks long. It may have an old school car record, just like what happened a few times. Uh, gas stations that are off at the uh, edge of the city. Yeah. You know, it's a little quieter. You do have to watch out. That's where that's sometimes using the touch, you know, like, you know, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, the Wi Fi or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, the yeah. touch hard contact touch thing. Isn't a bad thing, quite frankly. Do that. You're not. And the thing is, feel free to grab, like, when you, the next yeah. thing, feel the yeah. music. So feel free to grab so when you go and you look at a debit machine, you have to put your card in. Wherever you put your card in, just wiggle it, right? If you're at the gas station and you can see it, just wiggle it because the machines will come right off. Yeah. Right? They're not on, they're not anything. Sorry, there was, a, there was a question online about, but not a question, but uh, saying that the uh, there was a pay or settlement because you owe X amount of money from Rogers, but they've never been a Rogers customers. That happens all the time because the big conglomerates you might have purchased something that was kind of part of the Rogers family and they sold your information. And you should ask Jeff how much time. I don't yeah, know how much time. Yeah, we should. Yeah, yeah. We're good. If, we, if we can answer those questions from the internet. Yeah, yeah it looks like there was only that. that. We're ramblers. Just, um, yeah. Just sort of ramble. And then we'll have a break and yeah. we might be around. Yeah, and we can answer questions. I think what Mike and I are. Ask questions. I think our, our, for me, from my side, and I'll let Mike speak for himself, but so we scared you guys with all of this stuff today, but it's no different than the Catholic converter thefts. You can only protect yourself so much, but the goal is the more awareness you have, the, the better you're going to be at dealing with this, right? So 
no matter what you try, no matter what generation comes up, there's always going to be other scams. So keep yourself up to date on new scams. Even if it's if you're bored and you're looking at your phone and go, you know, I'm going to go check out Scams Canada or oh, no, yeah. Anti Fraud Center, right? Seriously. Like, because they have all of the newest scams because it's all entered in there. Yeah. And it's something that you'll be like, I never thought about that. And just a quick thing though, when it comes to reporting, because uh, <laughs> you had mentioned report. Yes. So if you've lost money, report. If your information has been comprom compromised, actually, you should report that as well. Quite frankly, because it is there is a criminal code section now for people stealing information. Report it, and luckily, and so so Jeff has enough time. Luckily, we are slowly modernizing our uh, reporting system so you can do it online. online because, quite frankly, I understand again our pride and everything. It, it it's, it's hard to come and tell someone else I've been scammed. It's hard, and I talk we to feel a lot silly. Of yeah, we, we feel silly. We shouldn't. But we do. So we feel like, how did I fall for that? Well, you know what? It happens to everybody, no matter what age. Again, that's one important thing to take from this. It's not just because, oh, I'm older, it's happening to me. No, it's happening to everyone. Okay? Because that's the big thing as well. Because that's what also happens is as we're older, we think, oh, I should have known better. We should all have known better, but it happens. So please never let that be what holds you back from trying to get help. Okay? Please. That's a big thing. And um, save, your, save your questions yeah. for break. Sure. Yeah, we can you can come and talk to us because that's what we're we're talkers. And I think Jeff has a really good uh, presentation and probably a lot more sequential. <laughs> <laughs> because again, it's I I haven't done a presentation the, since December. I know so the, the, fraud, the fraud is so uh, it's nebulous. It's and it gets so dry and yeah. It's right here. Thank you very much, yep, Mike and Pierre, you. for coming and presenting to oh, us. Um, and as I said, we'll have break, and um, they'll stick around, yeah, and yeah, people yeah. have questions. So let's say 